just always try and get the mic at the right level, being quite small. Okay, um, well, thank you very much. Um, obviously, and hopefully you all had a nice lunch. Um, no matter, I've been teaching and training and facilitating for probably over 20 years, and I can say it's still always daunting the first time, obviously, with a new audience as well. So, and I, I can talk lots, I can talk for England, but I'll obviously try and make sure that I keep quite this, obviously, presentation quite short and straight to the point as well. Um, I have been a contractor with Revenue New South Wales for probably nine, well, it'll be by the end of November, it'll be nine months, which is my contract term. And I remember when I went for the interview in March, um, I had um, two people interviewing me, and they said, well, you've got quite a challenge. You've got nine months to create 80 e-learning blended packages by the end of November, ready to be deployed. And I thought, gosh, this is going to be a challenge on all of um, my skills from project management, instructional design, training and development. But I can say that now, towards probably two months left to go, we are about 80% there. So out of all of those 80 e-learning e -learning blended courses, we're just about ready. And I can say without the team that I have, which is the picture, which are the important people, um, I would not be there. So we have 12 team members, and obviously I'm one of those team members, and we have a variety of people. We have the, um, I suppose, the privilege and the luxury of having instructional designers. We have contractors who are pure instructional designers, graphic designers, and we also have Revenue New South Wales people who are the subject matter experts. So the presentation that I'm about to provide to you is how we have taken all of the knowledge within Revenue New South Wales and transformed it into very um, state-of-the-art, interactive um, e-learning blended sessions that obviously are on Moodle, but we're also using quite a variety of different apps and software to make them into very collaborative e-learning sessions. So let's get stuck in. I think my screen's got frozen. Oh, hang on. There we go. Okay. So the presentation that I'm going to be going through, as I said, quite quickly, obviously questions at the end or obviously LinkedIn, you can ask me any further questions after the presentation as well. So I'm going to go through how it all started, which is the project background and also some of the project benefits to Revenue New South Wales. I'm going to look at the process in the planning, the consultation, and, and how we actually get to deploy all those 80 e-learning blended courses. And then obviously why you're all here as well is to look at how we've used Moodle. And we obviously use one of the certified Moodle partners, which is um, in the exhibition hall out there as well. And probably one of the most controversial and probably different, we actually use a course authoring tool. It's not necessarily sort of well known in Australia, but um, worldwide is, is used. And uh, we use Evolve. So I'm going to show you some of the screenshots from there as well. And then any questions. So a bit of the project information and background. Probably about, um, I'd say over a year ago, the Revenue New South Wales um, had a sort of um, have, a, have a commitment towards looking at um, supporting growth of regional areas. And there was four business units within Revenue New South Wales that was actually identified that could be taken um, up to Gosford. So Gosford offices are currently being built and we're ready for um, people to start working in within November, December. From that was realised that they actually needed a whole load of knowledge management content. And whilst obviously there have been big changes in Revenue New South Wales, that content ne wasn't necessarily current and up to date. So that triggered basically our project. A formal training needs analysis was undertaken by KPMG. KPMG came in and looked through all the different business units that were going to be relocated. And then they actually said, okay, based on the grades and based on the positions, they identified a whole load of um, competencies. From those competencies, we then took those and started to look at the different types of training courses that needed to be developed. And then from there, that created the 80 modules that we needed to create. 
across four different business units. So the 80 e-learning blended courses, and blended because the emphasis is not just purely on putting people on, on an LMS and then obviously getting them to do um, e-learning courses. The sort of emphasis is still trying to get the interaction and the consolidation on the actual learning that's actually going through as well. So we have, as I said, 80% of the way through deployment or building of 80 e-learning courses, blended courses. And we also have set up within that period of time an external hosted web um, LMS as well through Moodle. And towards the end of the presentation, I'll show you the, um, the screenshots of what they look like as well. Now, the Moodle obviously is an LMS that doesn't necessarily um, on its own talk to the human resource information system. So Revenue New South Wales have um, a very robust system that looks at obviously employees' performance. The data from that learning management system needs to talk to the HR system. So also within the scope, and my scope of my project seemed to sort of have scope project creep every month, everything new came up. So part of my project was also to look at um, the, a script or a report that could be written that takes the data from Moodle and then transfers it into the HRIS, which is my career cornerstone, which we use. So that also, once again, was set up with the vendor that we use for the LMS, for Moodle. Some of the benefits that sort of from the actual project, we have an up-to-date learning management system. And also on that learning management system is all the up-to-date e-learning units on there as well, or competencies. One of the areas that I'm sort of um, also looking at when I'm designing e-learning courses is taking it from a very traditional approach from pedagogy to pedagogy. And pedagogy is looking at more of the, I suppose, the millennium style of learning, which is looking at the collaborative and switching that sort of learning into a learner-focused environment. So that also was a scope of thinking about, well, the types of people that are going to be coming on these courses are not of my age group, but they're going to be more of people, obviously, from younger generation that have um, Facebook and different ways of actually learning. The team within Revenue New South Wales have come from a very traditional um, style of teaching. So not only are we teaching them different ways of obviously putting um, e-learning courses together, but we're also looking at upskilling in relation to digital education as well. The Revenue New South Wales, like a lot of government departments, are looking at becoming what we call enterprise RTOs. So in the horizon, they're also looking at bringing in traineeships, looking at have, having formal skills and qualifications. So part of my background is also coming from an RTO background. And everything that I have designed and put into place for Revenue New South Wales is based on something that obviously ASCA would be quite happy with is based on formal processes and procedures in learning and assessment and design as well. So all the policies and procedures that we have put into place would um, accommodate the needs of going through any audit through ASCA. We have, as I said, to um, ensure that everything that we have put into place, all the output from the e-learning and the LMS also would meet the human resource information system to be able to record that somebody's performance has achieved that particular competency. So how are we going to do that? So I'm going to look at next at the planning and deployment. Now this, for those people who are training and development background, won't be anything new, but um, it's more of the formal processes that we've actually gone through. So and we've sort of followed more or less the, the instructional design process, which is the ADE model and obviously putting in a lot more formal process and procedure. And as I said, I had a team, an existing team when I started, and um, the steep learning curve that they've actually gone through in, in sort of six months alone and getting this structured process has been amazing. And it's actually been amazing to see the team now who by the end of this will be fully qualified instructional designers as well. So the process that we go through is, as you can see on the flow chart, is the business unit would identify, obviously, what their training needs were. Then we develop the learning and assessment strategy, formalising all the modules that goes within each particular course. 
and then we create the, um, the module criteria, and then we actually create the learning assessment strategies. The learning assessment strategies is also what you would know as the storyboards as well. Then from there, we actually develop the plans for each particular module, and then we actually build the courses, and that could be on the e-learning, which is the course authoring tool, and or it could be on the blended approach where we go through traditional, and that's developing the, um, the facilitator guides, the learner guides, the PowerPoints, student assessment workbooks. So by the end of this process, you actually come with a full package of not only just e-learning that's formalized and aligned to the criteria, but also is aligned to also the, the traditional approach. And then we hand it over. Now, if you think this process is just, if you think we've got 80, so 80 of these different processes spinning around. So maybe you can understand why I thought it was a bit of a challenge. I didn't quite realize how much of a challenge. Now, like with everything, we need to ensure that we have audit trails and we have accountability and sign off. So I had to think very quickly about how I was going to get that blood, that signature in blood, so nobody could come back and say, no, that's not what I wanted. So we have four business units, and across all of those business units, I would probably have about 35 stakeholders from different departments. So one of the ways that we actually looked at trying to formalize this is through a collaborative page. So we have in Revenue New South Wales, which is a commercial product, which is called Confluence, and it's a collaborative tool that is a live collaborative tool. So if we put anything up there for review for one of the stakeholders, they can download it, they can have a look at it, they can put live comments on it. So as opposed to having five or six different types of documents all with different comments and having to collaborate all, at least then obviously then we can just um, have one page. <coughs> and as you can see, we have a live system as well where we give our stakeholders the um, opportunity to see where we're traveling. So the deployment of all those, those different e-learning packages is in a combination, as I said, a blended approach across a training plan. So within the training plan, it'll identify the actual uh, modules, and we could have a cluster of modules within one, one workshop session. We're also gonna have a one-day session to consolidate those modules. We also have the one-to-one -one supervisor observation and on the HRIS, there's an opportunity for you to basically put a, um, a record of that observation on there as well. Then coming back around every 12 months or, or as identified, obviously you have systematic refresher training that comes in as well. The LMS that we purchased has a plugin that also allows us to be able to schedule that. So it will send out automated emails as well. All of these outputs will create um, information that goes on the person's um, performance file. And that's part of obviously recorded in the HRIS. So every bit that any student does also gets recorded in there. So when we have completed all of those, the outcome is we have competent and Gosford ready people. So I'm just gonna take you through, because I'm conscious I'm gonna be getting the 15 minute soon coming up and look at what our LMS looks like. Now, as I said, you, by the screenshots, you'll be able to know very quickly which the LMS provider is. So for me, I've used Moodle for many, many years, and always the issue that I have with Moodle, being quite honest, is the actual interface from the student side of things. As I said, you have many different types of um, learners looking at the system from old to young, and it has to be very intuitive and very um, creative and colorful interface. So a screenshot of what our Moodle looks like as soon as somebody logs in. And as I said, you'll be able to see very quickly which um, vendor that one is there. Now, when you log in, we have also set up what's called SAML2 authentication. So SAML2 authentication means a person clicks on the, the icon on the login page and it automatically is authenticated them and they go straight into their allocated course. So as I said, we have about 80 of these all sitting currently on the system, currently at the moment. As you can also see, the, the dashboard here is a lot easier and user-friendly as well. 
as opposed to providing a user with lots of functions which they don't necessarily need. This is my function area as an administrator, but there is less for the actual person. So the student would go straight in and enter within the course. Now we use the grid format of um, presentation within the actual course. We use SCORM packages and also we use quizzes, but we also try and use within the quizzes the embedded close. Embedded close provides a number of alternatives as opposed to sort of, I would call the Mickey Mouse courses where it's only sort of drag and drop or um, multiple choice. So once you actually enter the, into the actual course, you have this section here. You would click on the actual icon and that would then take you into what you see here. So each one is structured the same. And once again, it's all about the, the learner's um, look and feel. So it's like when you go to a Holiday Inn or any branded hotel, you know what to expect when you're actually going in there. And the same thing with every one of these courses. It, the look and feel is all the same. So the learner knows what to expect and how to achieve the outcome. We have SCORM packages and we have the quiz options down here. If you click on the actual SCORM package, this is what you'll be looking at. So as I said, probably the most um, contemporary is actually the actual SCORM package that we use, which is called Evolve. And if you think about when you look at your Facebook page, you don't click through a Facebook page, you scroll. So the designers of Evolve have looked at the same sort of process. So we have set up the colour codes, the brand, the feel, once again specific to the business unit. So you would click on, obviously, enter in here. And this is the look and the feel. So it goes through blocks and articles. You have the interactions. You have hotspots. And if, if you've used Articulate Rise, think about that and take it 100% more. And that's what Evolve is. Now, we also do build in another um, different apps, different types of apps in there as well. So the main, um, and I always see Moodle as basically the starting point is the canvas. You've got to put information onto that canvas. So Moodle is an LMS, but it doesn't necessarily have all the course authoring tools that you actually need to make it interactive. So we've used Evolve. We use, for our graphics, we use Canva. And I'm lucky enough to have within my team two pure um, graphic designers. So for them, using um, Canva is a lot easier than Illustrator or um, any of the other different types of software that you, you probably take many years to actually practice on how to use. We also use GoAnimate, so we use a lot of um, videos in there. As you can imagine, when you're talking about fines and fees and duties, there's not many videos that you can link to on YouTube, so we have to create our own, and we try and make them quite um, interactive, amusing, and part of our legacy is that we've actually made sure that all of our names are in those videos. So when we leave this contract, they'll still be talking about Janine in land tax. So that's my, my bit to leave for Revenue New South Wales. We also use Camtasia. We're using Snagit and Camtasia. So when we actually do screen recordings in Snagit, we then want to put them together. We want to put video bumpers together. So we actually use Camtasia to put those together. We use Lucidchart. We do a lot of flow charting in our, in our um, e-learning courses. And also place it and can stock. So I have been lucky in my project that I have had resources, not only just the people, but also the resources to purchase these different um, software apps that we use to make them very creative. And as I said, I have been lucky with the team that I've had. And as you can see here, just on the land tax one, this is one of the infographics that one of my team have put together. Um, and before, they were purely people that actually started maybe on call centre in collections. And now I've turned them into instructional designers who are now creating very interactive courses for people, obviously, going forward when they get to Gosford. So all of these will be deployed by the end of November, beginning of December. And that's where now we're currently sitting where Revenue New South Wales have a full suite of very contemporary and interactive e-learning blended courses. And I think I'm just about on time, which is brilliant. So I've got one minute left of talking. Um, and then obviously five minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Yep. 
sorry, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, got a microphone just there. <laughs> just with your refresher courses where you have to do them yearly or um, second yearly, yes. how do you handle that? Do you have rollover?